Well, good day, everybody. I'd like to talk about something that, uh, to some, seems controversial, but uh, I want to take a fresh, clean, clean look at the Book of Revelation, especially chapter seven and chapter fourteen. And before I get started, you know, the things that I'm going to discuss here are they are in-house discussions. There's stuff that uh, believers in Yeshua can speak about without getting ourselves all wrapped around the axle with accusations and claims. Nothing here will be discussed that will be on the order of questioning the authority of Jesus, his deity, whether he was born of a virgin. Simply taking the book of Revelation, especially chapter 7 and 14, and just simply reading them and reading them only and forsaking all the commentaries that have been written over the years and the group think of what people think about these two chapters. So before I get started, I just want to go out and tell you what I think the word says. When you look at the words themselves, word by word, phrase by phrase, through the verses, I think it clearly says that there are two groups of 144,000, a Revelation 7 group and a Revelation 14 group. That would mean 288,000 in total. The second bit of information I think that comes out of this study is that if you notice from Revelation 7, you don't see the tribe of Ephraim. And the reason you don't see it here in Revelation 7 is because the tribe of Ephraim is here. I firmly believe that when you look through other parts of the Bible, you will soon realize that the Revelation 14 group of 144,000 that are not named, there's no tribe here, doesn't say the tribe of XYZ, it says nothing. I will show with at least five bits of text that this group is the tribe of Ephraim that is not listed here. So, once again, that's an in house discussion. It should not separate us or get people to be angry with this discussion. But I noticed that uh, when I bring this up in polite company among us Bible folks, people get all wrapped around the axle and want to start making accusations like this is a cult teaching or heresy or something to that effect. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We've read Revelation 7 a million times, at least the folks that study this stuff. And the first thing I want to say is obviously these 144,000 that are listed here, broken down into 12 tribes, are not the Jehovah's Witnesses. That's an easy one. Most people are going to agree. And they are not Jewish. Or at least they're not all Jewish. Jews are the southern tribe or the southern kingdom of, uh, of Judah. And that, and that uh, was made up of Judah and Benjamin. So Judah is Jewish. Benjamin is Jewish. That's two of, the, of these tribes. That's one-sixth of this group is Jewish, and the rest are Israelite tribes from the northern kingdom of Israel. So these are not Jews. The Jews are the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, like I said. So when you read through this, you come up with five key points. Twelve groups of 12,000. They're located on the earth. Do not harm the earth or the sea until the, we have sealed the servants who are on the earth on their foreheads. So they're located on the earth. They're sealed on their, they're sealed on their forehead. And there's no sex given, so they could be male or female. And the question is, where is Ephraim and Dan? So if we jump down to Revelation 14, we have another group of 144,000. So 144,000 is common between each chapter, but that's about it. That is the only common factor between these two chapters, is that they total 144,000. Everything else is different, and we'll show that. Uh, then I looked, and behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him 144,000 who had their name, the, father, the name of their father, written on their foreheads. They're not sealed. And he heard a voice like a roaring of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of the harpists playing their harps. Keep track of those harps being played. And they were singing a new song before the throne. So they're obviously on Mount Zion before the throne in heaven. They're not on Mount Zion in 
on the earth in Israel, they're in heaven. No one could learn that new song except this group of 144,000 who, who are redeemed from the earth. They refer to as virgins. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. And they are first fruits of God and the lamb. And in their mouth was found no lie, for they are blameless. So here's some of the key points. It's one monolithic group of 144,000. They're not broken down into multiple groups. They're located in heaven. The name of God is written on their forehead. They're not sealed. They are singing a new song, and they're the only ones who can sing it. They're redeemed from the earth. They appear to be male spiritual virgins, but that's only what they appear to be. I guess they could be female. They are first fruits, as in the first feast of first fruits that we celebrate on Resurrection Sunday. And we also have a first fruits that are mentioned at Pentecost. There are two loaves of bread that are made from uh, the barley flour and that they are waved um, on the Feast of First Fruits Shavuot. They are blameless and without fault. So if we compare these attributes between Revelation 7 and Revelation 14, we can see that every one of these is different. Twelve groups of 12,000, one group of 144,000, located on the earth, located in heaven, sealed on their forehead, the name of God written on their forehead. No sex is given. They appear to be male. Each group has a tribe name. There's no tribe name given for the 14 group. No mention of singing. And of course, the Revelation 14 group is singing a new song. So that's one key aspect to note here. It says, thirdly, like we said, that they are singing, present tense, a new song. And this is the only group that can that's able to learn that song, that's what it says. And there also happens to be a new song that's sung in Revelation chapter 5. So there's a scene in heaven where there are harpists playing. And the question is, how many new songs are there? Are there two new songs? Well, if there is one new song, and let us consider that there is only one song for the sake of this discussion, <clears throat> then it would appear that the Revelation 14 group would have to be there. Um, they would have to be there in Revelation 5 singing that, singing that new song. I firmly believe that they are there and that they are listed here as thousands of thousands. It says, Then I looked and heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, a voice of many angels. And the angels are numbering myriads and myriads. And that there's another group that's referred to as thousands, thousands of thousands. So the angels are, are numbered myriads of myriads. So that's their number. But the thousands of thousands appear to be potentially the 144,000. So understanding that the new song is sung first in Revelation 5, then like I said earlier here, that this group might also be present in this scene in Revelation 5. So, what therefore can be said about the 144,000 in Revelation 7 who are still on the earth and not sealed as of Revelation 5? Well, this would imply that there are two groups and these groups are not the same groups based on the information here. One thing to note if we jump back into the Old Testament and we read 1 Chronicles chapter 27 verse 1 it actually describes King David having an army that would come month by month throughout the year by each division, and each division was 24,000. So 12 months times 24,000 is 288,000. So indeed, King David had an army of 288,000. So if there are two groups of 144,000, then you would see then, the, then King Jesus would be like his father, King David, where he would have an army that's listed as 288. So there is a pattern there. So the next question is, 
Who is this 144,000? Where have we seen them before? Are there clues in the Bible that could give us some information? So look at the the things I have listed here in bold. They are on Mount Zion, the heavenly Mount Zion. There's a total of 144,000. They're before the throne. They're redeemed from the earth. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes, and they are first fruits. So let's look at these clues. Standing before the throne on heavenly Mount Zion in Jeremiah 31, it says, For there will be a day when the watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Arise, let us go up to Zion. Then we read Hosea 9. It says, The prophet is a watchman of Ephraim who is with God, and God is on Mount Zion. So we keep seeing these references to these watchmen, the watchmen of Ephraim, they're on Mount Zion. Isaiah 52, the voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice and they sing. So here's a group of watchmen who are Ephraim, the tribe of Ephraim. They are singing a song of joy. For eye to eye, they see the return of the Lord on Mount Zion. So these folks are watchmen. They're in Mount Zion talking, singing about his return. So it's obvious to say that Ephraim is before the throne of God based on these verses. Their number is 144,000. Let's jump to Deuteronomy 33. This is where we get a clue directly about Ephraim and Manasseh. It says that, that there are ten thousands of Ephraim. Ten thousands. Sorry, really it's ten thousands, tens thousands. Uh, of Ephraim and tens of thousands is 144,000. That's 14.4 tens. It also makes a reference to Manasseh being just thousands. So where do we have a reference of Manasseh being thousands, singular thousands? Well, lo and behold, we have that in Revelation 7. It says that Manasseh there is 12,000. And we hear, we see in Deuteronomy that that aligns with this reference in Deuteronomy 33, verse 17. So if we can tie this portion of the verse to Revelation 7, which it does, then we could also tie the tens of thousands of Ephraim to Revelation 14. All right, redeemed from the earth. The Revelation 14 group is redeemed from the earth. And it says in Zechariah 10, Then Ephraim shall become like a mighty warrior. Their hearts shall be as glad as wine. Their children shall see it and be glad. Their hearts shall rejoice in the Lord, and I will whistle for them. I will bring them in, gather them in, for I have redeemed them. Straight from Revelation 14, Ephraim is redeemed. First fruits of God, Jeremiah 31, verse 9. It says, For I, God, am the Father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. First fruits, same concept. Ephraim is God's firstborn fruits. Right from Jeremiah 31, 9. Doesn't get any more straightforward than that. Then it says that they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. If you read Psalm 60, you see that Ephraim has a special position in the body of Christ. We know that, that Jesus Himself is the head of the body. And we learn from Psalm 60 that Ephraim is the helmet of God. So what would that mean? When you look at the body of Christ with Jesus at the head, you have the helmet that's attached to the head. So obviously the helmet, Ephraim, must go wherever the Lord goes because he is tightly wrapped around the Lord. So if we summarize this, we can look at these five clues that I just pointed to up here, these five sets of clues that all say the same thing that Ephraim somehow is associated with each of the clues that are listed here in bold. There's no other tribe. You can't put Manasseh in there. You can't put Zebulon in there. You can't put Dan in there. Ephraim fits perfectly. This is not a coincidence. So you see, these five sets of clues point to the tribe of Ephraim being the 144,000 from 14, in the same way that you have 12 tribes listed in Revelation 7. And there is no tribe of Ephraim in chapter 7. It's missing from the list. 
Ephraim is a mystery. All right, so to conclude here, we see that there must be, or there surely appears to be two groups of 144,000, where the descriptive attributes from 7 and 14, chapter 7 and 14, are analyzed, and they're not alike whatsoever. Secondly, they're mutually exclusive. One's on the earth and one's, on, one's in heaven. One set sealed, the other set has the name of God written on their forehead. And also we see King David has an army that set up the same number, 288. The Revelation 7 group does not have Ephraim listed. The question is, where is it? The Revelation 14 group doesn't have a name, doesn't have a tribal name. So what's its name? And the fact that we have these five descriptive attributes that all lead to the Revelation 14 group being the tribe of Ephraim. So, with that, I would ask you to ponder these verses, read them, pray about them, and see where the Lord takes you. All right, guys. God bless you. Have a good day.